What's up guys and gals and welcome back to the Nerd Castle for another Steam Festival demo. I know! I know, how surprising, another Steam Festival demo. Uh, we're playing Distant Kingdoms today, which they've got their Steam page up right here, so pardon me for a moment while I take a break from being the improviser, and I'll just let the game tell you what it is. A unique blend of city building, social management, exploration, and adventure gameplay! There you go. So we're going to dive on in, we're going to take a look at the demo today, see if it's something you wanted to add to your wish list or otherwise pass on. If after doing that you wanted to do it, or not do it. If you want, if you're in the not do it party, don't worry about this part. If you're in the do it party, then you just go down to the description, and down there you'll find a link to the game so that you can wish list and all that fun stuff. In addition, you'll find a link to my socials so that you can hang out with me even more. I know I'm so lonely out here on the internet, all by myself in my office. So let's dive right on in. All right, so welcome to the Distant Kingdoms tutorial. Sounds good. Apparently. The survivors of the Talam Cataclysm are fervently awaiting our guidance. we got to help them survive and thrive in their new home. We will discover weird and wonderful creatures that stalk the plains, the mountains, and everything else. Okay. Alright, so we've got ourselves some stuff over here. We have Crescents, which is apparently our money. It looks like we've got access to mana, which is probably how we're going to cast magic, let's be honest here. We've got access to happiness, which is just how fulfilled everybody is. I plan to keep that extra low, and then I'm just going to put a big order in for taskmasters and whips. That's pretty much it. Uh, we've got local residents, so nobody lives here right now. It's just a bunch of empty tents in the middle of nowhere. Over here we've got new buildings that we can play around with. Various attributes like demolition, we've got construction, transportation. All that fun stuff. We can also apparently research technologies, so that'll be kind of fun. This is our settlement right here, and we can open it on up to find out more information about this settlement, i.e. what its happiness is. How many people are going to be immigrating? It looks like we've also got like some financial trajectory information down here as well. Okay, and then so it wants me to build a warehouse right now. So let's build a warehouse. We've got a small warehouse on this side. So does the warehouse have to be connected? It looks like it actually functions inside of a ring right here, too, so I'm going to guess that that's all the areas that it can effectively service with the items that are inside of it. Okay, we can press the E key, and it looks like we can just rotate it around. I don't know if we're going to have to build roads or something at some point, so I'll probably just put it right here so that we can make the roads look all clean. It looks like it just builds up naturally over time, so we don't have any constructors or anything running out from over here in order to take care of business. It looks like they've just got... Oh, there it is. Never mind. Poof! It's available. And so now, inside of here, we've got a bunch of other stuff we can look at, like what goods it's hoarding. So apparently we've got wood, giggity giggity goo, as usual. We've also got some berries, which are usable by various fantasy races as a food. Okay. We have a stockpile limit over here. It's how many items can obviously be put inside of this location. I'm glad that it's actually kind of large. I don't like it when, like, games have, like, warehouses that can only hold, like, a hundred things. And so, like, you've got to have, like, a million different warehouses for a million different things and a, a million different logistical settings. I don't know. I'm not a big micromanagement guy. I like it when my warehouses are one all-in-one solution for everything that you're going to need inside of a big circle. Uh, it's also got its efficiency right here, how well it's working, and how many people are working at the facility. All right. So after going through the ins and outs of how to manage my warehouse, it now wants me to make a marketplace. So let's take a look. We've got a marketplace right here. It distributes goods. Okay, so it's probably a good idea to have this, like, somewhere near our warehouse so that they can just, like, walk next door and pick it up. Yeah, not like a plan to me. Let's throw it on down. Our maintenance costs are going to be increasing though as time goes along. Every single one of these buildings costs money down here, and so we're going to be trickling downwards. I assume the marketplace is going to bring in some level of tax revenues and whatnot. So we've got to build roads now, is what it wants me to do. We've got a dirt road over on this side. I'm just going to, like, kind of put it right meh. Looks good to me. There's our first road. Perfect. Now it wants me to build houses. Okay, we gotta have a place for people to live. I get it. Oh, these houses are larger than I expected. Uh, looks like they connect to the road a like a so. Okay. Um, I'll probably smush it up in here. Hopefully it still functions the way that I want it to. Their house is gonna directly- Oh, there was a little guy! There's little guys walking around! Look at there, he's got himself a crate! Just carrying a crate on a dusty road, making money with some places to go. I got a crate. There's some deers and stuff out here, too. Maybe we can go kill some deer and get some food. Oh, there's a berry. There's a little berry bush over on that side as well. 
Okay. The game feels really, really smooth. Like, I'm actually kind of surprised at the frame rate with all the particles and, like, all of the grass graphics and everything else. Like, I'm actually kind of surprised with how smooth it is. Normally, when games are, like, realistic like this, uh, you take a little bit of a hit in the early demo phase to performance. I think... Where do I want to put the rest of my houses at? I'm going to put a little cut through over here. That's what I'm going to do. We'll put a little cut through right there. Perfect. We got our little cut through. Cut through accomplished. I'm going to put another couple houses down here. It wants me to do like three of them, and I think I can live with that. I probably should have held down shift while doing that. It would have made my life easier, but I don't believe in the easy way. I believe in doing everything the hard way, especially in a public venue where people can make fun of me. I'll put this up here. All right, perfect. And so now we've got a little pass through. And so we've got a couple of people living inside of our area. It looks like he's got a little garden outside of his house. He's living in kind of a little stone yurt. I don't even know what you'd call that. It looks like the kind of place that Baba Yaga would live. The thing's not going to stand up on chicken legs, is it? So the houses are up. One thing that I have initially noticed already mechanically, well, not mechanically, I guess, but the houses have different layouts. Uh, so this one is the same as this one, but this is an alternate layout for the house. I like that. I think every city builder should have a minimum of like four or five different graphics for the same building. Just break apart the monotony. Like when you zoom out to the larger macro scale, it makes it look better once it's all assembled. Okay, so our residents are going to pay us money now for existing. Gotta love that. So we've got a positive change right now. That's good. It looks like, let's click on this place. So the happiness is at five right now. Apparently humans live inside of these buildings right here. If we can get them water and we can get them bread, it looks like the place is going to upgrade. Okay, and peasants want to live here. Human peasants. Sounds good. So the tax revenue that's coming in is four crescents per cycle. Very nice. All right. I already looked at the detail. I already did the details. So it looks like we got three different stats for the building that we have to be aware of here. Uh, apparently the game was right in telling me to look at the details. So we can upgrade various aspects of these buildings. We can upgrade its affluence. It looks like we can also upgrade the density and how many people that live there, but it increases our fire risk. And it also increases our crime if we upgrade the affluence, I guess. Or maybe it lowers the crime, who knows. Uh, unable to downgrade density. Okay. So we can upgrade and downgrade density as we see fit. Okay, that sounds good. Sound like a plan to me. And then inside of our marketplace over here, uh, we've got an overview of the needs of people nearby. They all want berries. That's like the big part. Is everybody like, give me the berries. I want to shove them in my face. As a little reminder, you can hover your cursor on most everything to get a tooltip. Yay. That's also a nice feature to have. So we've got our tech tree now. Let's take a look at that. It looks like as of right now, we're somewhat limited in what we can accomplish. But we can get resource working over here, and we can set our focus on it so that we're, like, working on that. And that's going to unlock some new stuff. So we did that. We did that. And we did all that. So I'm going to kind of, like, close those out. They want me to increase my population to 10. Okay. That shouldn't be too hard. I left a little bit of space over here for new houses, too. So, like, let's say that each one of these is two people, so we need two more. Uh, we'll put one right there, and then we will put one kind of, like, right there. Good. So now we've got our little residential housing district. It doesn't... Did it cost us anything to do that? It's just flat money that we pay for some of this stuff? Oh, we need wood. Okay, but wood's not listed on our little guidelines over here. So that's why I was wondering, is I was kind of like, uh... So with the houses, is it just flat costing us money? Because I don't see anything on the layout over here that's letting me know that if there's any, like, advanced tools going into it. We'll go ahead and uh, make this go a little bit faster. They're bringing over the goodies from the warehouse right now. Those houses should be up and ready to rock very, very shortly. Let's see if we got any other alternate graphics right here. Yeah, we did. This one's got a little outhouse. This one's got a little outhouse, and it's got the garden back in the corner right there, and it's got a haystack. And then this one right here has got a storage chest up next to the building. The outhouse is in the corner. Yeah, and then it's got kind of a little little granary area over there where they store all their goods, and it looks like a little cooking-like area, maybe. Oh, look, they congregate in the street to talk. Okay. Uh, back to our tech tree. It looks like we've unlocked this node. So we've got access to a lumber yard. We've got access to a well. That's one of our fundamental needs that we need in order to make people happy. And then we can get a gatherer's hut, too. So let's go ahead and do it. Perfect. Do people auto-assign to these jobs? I have questions. Eh, let's see here. Nobody's working there. Oh, yeah, it does. So the two people that work there at the warehouse auto-assigned. Perfect. Good to know. All right, so we've got our resource working going on right now. It wants me to build a lumber yard. I think the lumber yard should probably go over in this area is where I'm feeling like the lumber yard should go. So we'll take that right there. And then inside of our construction, we've got the lumber yard. This is obviously probably going to gather trees would be my guess. I don't know if this guy makes people upset. Actually, I guess I could do a longer road to give him access to more trees. There we go. We'll do that. We'll make his life a little bit easier. We will surround him and pound him with the power of our wood. 
Uh, let's turn the game back on. We'll get that constructed. And then once the workers have been assigned over here, bam, bam, bomb. We've got three workers ready to rock. So they should go out and they should gather trees. And then once they gather the trees, they're going to saw those on down with their comically oversized sawmill right here. Because what good is a sawmill if it's not comically oversized? Don't worry. If they bust a blade, they've got an extra one right there. They've already got an extra one. And it looks like production is now moving. Fantastic. It also looks like we can kind of like invest to replant trees. So that'd be good. I would suggest, so that they don't have to go all the way around to the warehouse, I'm going to put a little connecting road right here just to make that a tad more efficient. We're going to have a little bit of dead space on this side unless there's like much, much smaller buildings. I'll probably try to put a well up in there actually because like right here we don't really have room for much and right here we don't really have room for much. But that's going to make them be able to kind of draw a straight line and it's going to cause our logistics to not be quite as big of an issue. All right, so we've got the lumber yard. We've got an upgrades tab over here where if we've got enough money and we've got enough other wood and like sundries we can actually like upgrade this thing and make it a little bit sexier so we can have like some strengthened axes and whatnot is the wood going inside to like the so my question is the wood is going inside of here right so why is the wood not listed on my hud anywhere i have questions i would very much like to have the wood listed around somewhere that I, so i can see how much i have like, I thought that it would just be added to kind of this sidebar over here so that I would always have kind of eyes on on the things that I need. Uh, we got the gatherer's hut, and the gatherer's hut seems like it is specifically for berries. I'm a little bit worried about placing it right there. That kind of scares me. Yeah, that, like, wiped out all of my bushes. See, that's what I was worried about right there. That's I was a little bit worried about the placement, but the ring wasn't large enough to make the whole thing, like, sustainable. So now we have much less bushes. Maybe it'll have a replant option just like the tree has. All right, so here's our gatherer set. I'm going to strongly suggest you plant as many bushes as you can. Good. It does have the replant option, so that pleases me. Looks like they're going to be producing berries pretty fast. The downside is the berry producer has a very, very long walk in order to get back to the warehouse. So, like, I actually feel like maybe a better location uh, is the warehouse goes over here. That way it's kind of, like, equal distances. It's equidistant. There we go. I finally get to use my mathematical terms. All right, so we're on our own now, from what I understand. Let's get on into our tech tree. It looks like we can do farming. I think farming sounds like a really good idea. Or we can do masonry. It looks like for this right here, I actually kind of like how the tech tree requires you to build things and do stuff. I sort of dig that, how it's like a mini quest. Like most games, what they do is when you have like a tech tree, you just kind of like tick up points over time based on how many people you assign to it. I sort of like that in order to unlock new buildings and new technologies, you've got to kind of like grow your city and like do better. Uh, are we good right now? Are we making money? These guys should all be satisfied. I think we should make the well like sooner rather than later. So I'm going to put a well like right there at the end of the street so that that's going to be good and ready to rock. They only need wood to make the well, so that's fantastic. We do have a little bit of wood remaining. And the well is one of the things that we need in order to get ourselves pumping anyways. So like Fair enough. I may pop down the warehouse over here anyways. I don't know. I kind of I want there to be a place for the berries to go. I feel bad for my berries right now. A man's got to take care of his berries. Uh, we've got that right there. And then I think I can do another one right here. These two will benefit even more. We're starting to run low on crescents. I would recommend you build some more houses. Yeah, that's what I'm doing. I am already on it, game. Believe me. I'm, ke I'm keeping an eye on the economic situation. I'm trying to make sure that my people, you know, are running on up. Uh, we've got a tax income of 20. Our net change is just because I've been spending a lot, in all honesty. That's got to be, like, the biggest part is this. I have not been very thrifty. I've been spending a lot of money. As people move into these locations, I feel like we'll be in better shape. Their happiness is at 75%. It should go up once they get access to the basic needs, like the berries and everything else. How are our berries looking over here? Not a lot of berries to go around. Not a lot of berries to go around, probably due to the fact that these guys have to walk like 900 miles. And I would walk 900 miles, and I would walk 900 more. Just be the man. I think I'll probably, I kind of want to bulldoze this and rebuild it. Like, let the citizenry figure out where they want to place stuff on their own. I mean, we do have money coming in. I, I'm willing to bet, though, that the berries are not staying inside of here very often just because we're gathering them at, like, a criminally low rate. 
Yeah, like the water is getting on. Oh, you need somebody to work at the well? Oh, you do indeed. Okay, so somebody works at the well, and they're just being water farriers. All right, uh, let's give this, so what do I need in order to make a new warehouse? Because I feel like that warehouse was placed in a really, really bad spot. And while our happiness is not great right now, I'd like for it to be better. I feel like we're in better shape right now, like money is starting to go up. And we have like a surplus for once in our lives. So like, since I have a surplus, I'm gonna put in a couple more houses, just in case. I'd like this number to go up a little faster. Like we have berries, we have water, and we have everything stored up. So these people should have access to all they th all they need through like the market. How big is the market's area of influence? It's pretty large, so it looks like they'll wander to it from like quite a ways away. I like the music too. I've actually got a good feeling about this game. The music sounds great. It's very immersive. Like I like how the buildings have differing graphics from one another, even though they're the same building. Like it's ticking boxes for me right now. It is ticking boxes. Uh, so here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna build the second warehouse first. And then I'm going to bulldoze the other warehouse. Is this face properly? Okay, I just wanted to make sure that the facing was good. We'll put that right there and we'll let it build. And then this guy right here. Oh no, I'm not planning on moving anything in between them. I don't mind that at all. Oh, really? We have trade routes. Oh, so we can find other cities on an over map too. Okay. There we go. So we've added the routes between the two. That is going to increase our overhead, which kind of, like, worries me. Like, this wasn't what I was planning on getting into, but since it's a mechanic of the game, I'm going to leave it. Like, just because, like, we just saw that you can create trade routes in between stuff, too. So I guess we can move stuff in between these two locations. Uh, one thing that I would like to do is... Actually, we'll leave berries enabled over here. I was going to disable berries on there and enable berries over here. But I think it'll be okay. People seem to be reasonably happy. And for once, we have, like, income coming in. One of these buildings basically negates two of these houses. And so we got to pay people to do stuff, obviously. People like a fair day's wage. Our farming is done. Yeah, we've got a crop farm and we've got grain now. That's pretty cool. Let's get baking going. Oh, we need 30 residents, though, in order for that to function. Is there something easier that I can mess around with? We've got stone mining over here, and we're almost done with that. I'm going to go with the stone mining real fast. All right, so now that we're returned, I'm going to unpause the game real fast. And they should start moving things in between there. Is this place generating income or anything else like that? Like, it looks like they're selling stuff. We need to get bread up and running. So, like, where is our crop farm at? We've got a crop farm right there. It looks like we kind of want the crop farm to be, like, far away from everything else. Yeah. Like, it looks like it's got, like, kind of an operating area that it likes to function inside of. Oh, I need more crescents. Okay, we're too broke right now. Oh, we've got randomized events that come up as well. Someone at the treasury isn't great at math, resulting in too much tax being collected. What should we do it? Uh, yeah, issue the refunds, man. There you go. Give me the give me the plus three happiness for a few months. I'll use it as overhead. Although three months doesn't seem very long in this game. Yeah, we've already gone through one of our months of bonus. Eh, fair enough. We did need one more house to make ourselves happy for, like, the next thing that we're building. Uh, but the crop farm is kind of, like, what I'm on to right now. Does the crop... The crop farm doesn't generate money, though. Housing generates money. Which is kind of my thinking there. We'll have this guy live next to the warehouse. It also gives us a little bit more population. As far as I can tell, we're good on food. We're good on water. So, like, why stress it? You know what I mean? Let's put the house in right there. And then we'll have, like, a little road go down this way. Maybe we'll be able to fit something down there. Maybe not. I don't know if we need to, like, annex neighboring tiles in order to, like, get control of them sort of foundation style. Oof. Foundation. How I love the... Uh, we've also got our crop farm, which we can get going over here. I'll put that right there. I gotta get a road out to this thing, though. There we go. The road has been built. I think that's probably gonna get in the way of some of our farming, but like, eh. Everybody needs to, you gotta have a scenic road that goes to the middle of all of, you know, the scenic barley, okay? This is the cost in order for us to make, ooh, we gotta do some farms over here? Nice. So we've got a grain field right there. We can place it. Oh, it costs a lot of money, though. It costs a lot of the monies. There we go. It had me disabled on planting fields. How dare it. How dare it do this to me. How darest thou. Uh, yeah, dude. We'll put in some fields. Some amber waves of grain and all that fun stuff. How many fields can this support? Six? 
Okay, we'll kind of keep it like symmetrical right there. Apparently a ton of people work here, by the way. Like this place has seven workers. There's like tons of them, dude. Apparently farm work takes a lot of folk. I actually don't even know. So we need, so here we have nobody working at like the market. We have two people working there, two people working there. We've got like three people working there. Uh, is there a place where it shows we got 20 population right here? I'd like to see an unemployment number right here too, like that same symbol but with like a little teardrop next to it so that I know how many unemployed people I have left over. I don't think we've used up 20 workers though. That seems really unlikely to me. So we got five, seven, nine. So there should be 11 people available, I would think. What's that? The price has been overcome by a horrific, or the place has been overcome by a horrific, pungent odor. Nobody knows where it's coming from, but it's making people nauseous and angry. Uh, we don't have $350, so we'll just mask the smell. Maybe good things will happen. Yeah, we just gotta hide it. We don't have the cash coming in right now. We don't have the, we don't have the money flows. Ah, uh, apparently people got sick anyways. Feels bad. Uh, we may lose some population here. So they're not working at the farm. I don't really know why. Maybe it's because the road is not sufficient. I don't know which way. I feel like I had my road facing correct. Was it facing out back? Yeah, that's the front of the building right there. I don't know. I built the road back on through, but nobody seems to be coming to work here. Which is the part that's concerned. Like, little guys keep coming out here like they want to work there. But they don't end up working there. Hmm. Maybe... Just maybe we demo it and let's try again with the road previously built and see if that fixes it. Like we got a little bit of money back anyways. Uh, let's go with it right here. So there. Now it's got like an established road connected to it. Did that use up all of my wood though? I don't know, dude. We got tons of wood. Tons of wood for wood-like projects. It's going to be fine. Everything's going to work out. He's got to have a positive attitude. A positive attitude fix. There it is. So apparently it didn't like the road placement. Uh, we'll go ahead and we'll put in some... Let's start from the corner over here so it looks good. Yeah, we'll just throw that in right there. We've got room for like two more. We'll just put one on each side. There you go. So this should now be producing bushels of grain. And then if we can turn that into bread, that would be even better. We've got seven workers right now, so we should have three or four still remaining. So with the crop farm, we can get a stone mine pretty soon. Oh, we unlocked it. Nice. Okay, so that should be ready to rock. Let's go ahead and unlock it. There you go. Uh, I'm going to unlock bread, too. We need 30 residents, though. So we're going to need some more people. I did unlock mining. I did indeed. I did indeed unlock the minies. The wonderful, beautiful minies. Um, what I want now is houses is what it looks like to me. We gotta go kind of like straight ham hoss on some houses. What does this do over here? Hmm. Okay, so apparently it just sits there and looks pretty. I respect it. I mean, that's an ideal way to live your life. If you can get paid to do it, get paid to do it, man. I'm not a hater like that. If you can get paid to just be pretty and exist, <laughs> live in the dream, brother. Live in the dream. Uh, we'll take this over here. Take that over here. A few more houses ready to rock. Maybe I'll put in another subdivision over here. As far as I can tell, like, we're sitting on lots of food. So, like, yeah, we've got food coming out of our ears right now. And not just because we haven't yet researched how eating works. Uh, the food was in there to begin with. They arrived with food in their ears. I don't, I don't really know how to sugarcoat that any further. I'll we'll put a house right there. And then we need a little rood. Yep. There you go. The road runs to our... Oh, we actually didn't have our city center connected at all. Hopefully that didn't negatively affect us. No, no. We got more houses coming on in, so what's not to love about that? A few more people. Add them to the city. A few more people. The place is looking pretty. It actually looks like a full and proper village now. Very nice. So that should be our bread allotment. Yep. There it is. We've got access to bread now. Let's unlock it. Bread is awesome. Bread is like my favorite part of any meal. Uh, I'm just going to let this run and we'll take a look. we got a windmill over here, so that'll turn the grain into other goodies. I'll probably put this like right down at the end of the road right here so that it connects. There we go. I don't know what that just cost me, by the way. That may have cost me a great deal. Oh, we need stone. Okay, so we got to like put in a little... 
put a little minorinos over here. Oh, there's a mine. It's all the way up there, though. Gross. I don't like that. That's kind of a pain in the butt cheek. Okay. Um. You know, I'm not in love with this mine right here, but since I have to put it on a static location, I'm going to put it on a static location, baby. There's a road right there. Have fun constructing that and doing what it is that you do, guys. I'm sorry you have to walk a really, really long way to get stuff done. But yeah, this is Distant Kingdoms. I'm kind of digging it, actually. I want to see where it goes. Like, the game runs remarkably smoothly. It's got some of the hallmarks of a game that's got, like, care put into it, like alternate building graphics and stuff like that. And so it's got my ears perked up a little bit. It definitely does. And you know me. I love my... I've never met a city builder that I don't love, so... You know, we might have to get down on this. I'll see y'all later. Thank you for stopping on in. Leave a like on the video if you enjoyed it. My name is Splattercat. I sift through the pile to find what's worthwhile in the world of indie games every single day. So you don't have to. I will see you all next time. Thank you for stopping on in. And I'll be back tomorrow with something good.